Hello children. We are discussing the chapter first, the living world. In this chapter, we had done what is life, what is the difference between the living and the non-living, what are the characteristics of their differentiation. After that, we discussed the various taxonomical terms like taxonomy, systematics, classification, identification. Then we go for the binomial nomenclature, the rules of the binomial nomenclature. And now we are discussing the taxonomical age. Taxonomic, taxonomic aids are the aids, procedures, methods or various scientific procedures which helps us in classification, in nomenclature and identification of various organisms and those helpful methods are referred as taxonomical aids. The first aid which we had discussed was botanical gardens. Botanical gardens are the gardens, are the areas, the places which are meant to store the various plants. A variety of plants, the seeds are stored in those botanical gardens for scientific and educational purposes, as well as they help us in research purpose. So botanical gardens are for research and educational purpose. So those purposes are meant by the or are perpetuated by the botanical gardens. The first botanical garden in India is Indian Botanical Garden in Havana, which is now in Kolkata. Initially it is referred as the, the very old name of this Indian Botanical Garden is National Botanical Garden. Now, this garden is referred as Acharya Subhash Chandra Bos Botanical Garden. Rather than this, Royal Botanical Garden is present in Kew, London, England. It's one of the largest botanical gardens we have in the world. It is an international botanical garden. Rather than this, we have a National Botanical Garden in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. So these are the main botanical gardens. The Indian Botanical Garden is famous for three various three species. The first one is Banyan Tree, which lives for two fifty years. It has you know many the special prop roots around it which is present in the form of a canop canopy. If we want to see the main stem, we have to remove those various prop stems. Next, the Indian Botanical Garden is composed of another species which is named as Pendeners. Next species is Victoria Amazonica, that is Gant water lily. They are very Gant, they are very large in size. One water lily will cover a 2 to 3 square meter area around it. So that's why these are certain species which is, you know, specific in that garden. So, these botanical gardens help us in research purpose, in educational purpose and if we want to study a particular plant then we can go there as well as we can preserve various seeds for our later on purpose. Second taxonomic aim which we are going to study is zoological parks. Zoological parks are also referred as zoological gardens and they are in general referred as zoo. The first zoo in India was set up in Chennai in 1837. Later on these zoos, these zoos are modified for various protective measures. What are zoological gardens? They, these are certain protected areas. Or you can say these are the enclosed areas where animals used to live in captivity under human surveillance, under human care. So zoos are the protected areas where various type or various variety of animals are protected under human care. The advantage of the zoo is we can be able to know the various 
habits and behavior of animals which helps us in studying the various characteristics of the animals among themselves among the particular species itself as well as with the other species next advantage of the zoo is they are used for various recreational purposes they are used for the various entertainment purposes the people go to the visit uh, go to visit the zoos and the children enjoy their like safaris or and like other such activities are there in the zoos which recreate a human being so those zoological parks are meant for the protection and other thing is protection of endangered species it's a very important point to say as there are certain species whose number is very less and they are vulnerable they are they will be extinct soon in their natural habitat so those species can be protected in zoos next thing the number of particular species is also increased in zoo by various reproduction methods they allow to be produced and the offsprings are to be kept under various surveillance the various facilities like food medical facilities are provided to those offsprings and those offsprings will remain remain healthy and that's how the population keeps on increasing so the zoos may serve that purpose also so this is the zoological parks the second taxonomic aid which helps us in identification as well as in classifying the various organisms third taxonomic aid which we are going to study is herbivora Herbarium are the large sheets which are meant to protect the various plant species. The various plant species are pressed and pinned on the herbarium sheets, and those herbariums are to be kept in a safe place with a variety of plants which are pinned and pressed over them. These herbariums are very helpful for the students of botany or the students who wants to do certain research work or who wants to. study the characteristics of various plants the herbarium sheets are of a particular size are of a fixed size in general the size of the herbarium sheet is 29 into 41 this size is of north americans indian herbariums are generally of size 29 into 43 cm a plant suppose it's a kind of plant the plant must be pressed and pinned very carefully and in this particular manner so that the features of the plant are visible appropriately and accurately next there is a column or there is a label present on that herbarium sheet at the right lower most corner the size of that label is 7 into 12 centimeters or so this label contains its local name its scientific name family rather than family it has the date of collection area or place of collection from be collected and the last one is authors name so these informations are placed on a particular herbarium the large plants are to be molded or are to be made in an or w shape and to be pressed and pinned over the herbarium so these herbariums are placed and those are to be used in a very systematic manner for the sequential study of various features of variety of plants these herbariums contain all the kind of plant species along with the features like what are the leaf pattern what are the venation pattern on the leaves what are the root system patterns what is the stem composition of a plant so that's how the herbariums are helpful to us in systematical study or in the taxonomical study of various species now we will discuss the various 
methods by which we can identify a particular species. The first one of which is monograph. What is a monograph? It is a material or it is a type of aid which has a systematic study of a given taxon or a class. Class in the sense, the taxonomical classes, the hierarchical levels. That one complete taxon is defined in monograph. Whereas, whereas the study of a particular species is done by the help of a manual. So, what's the difference between the monograph and manual? Monograph gives us a systematic study, the complete description that is occurrence habits, various you know, features of a particular taxon, one class complete, one family, one genus, whereas the descriptive study, the systematic study of one particular species, whether it's a plant species or animal species, is written in a manual. So, this is related to one particular species, whereas the monograph is related to the systematic study of a particular Taxon or hierarchical level. The third is flora. Flora gives us the detail, that is the occurrence, habits, features of plants, of only plants in a particular region, in a particular area. This type of systematic study is known as flora. Next one is a catalog. Likewise, flora, when a systematic study of animals and plants in a specific area, in a specific region is done, then it is referred as, it is written as a complete catalog. So, let's say the first four things that you have discussed is first is monograph. The systematic study of one given taxon or hierarchical level. Next, we describe the manual, the description, the systematic study, the occurrence, the habits, the features of a particular species only is written as a manual. Next, flora, particular organisms or plants only inhabiting in a given area, given place, given certified limited area that is known as. Or that is written in as a flora and the last one is catalog both animals and plants of a given region their habitats their sorry their habits their occurrence their features are described in a written document and that is known as a catalog the last is key the one which is included in your NCR this is this what is a key Key is a setup which composed or which consists of various statements which are contrasting or alternating with each other. By defining those characteristics or features one by one, we will conclude, we will go to a conclusion of a particular species or a taxon or a class or a order or a family. So it is basically composed of certain alternate statements. The general statements which are already given in these keys are referred as couplets. And single statement out of those two one statement is known as a lead. The keys are of two types, but the intended keys also known as yog keys, and the other ones are the bracketed keys. The taxonomists use those keys to pinpoint a particular organism, to identify a particular species from the various different characters. If we take an example of it, the first couplet which is provided to us which we are taking as an example is whether the organism is composed of one cell 
or the organism is multicellular. These are the two statements, but check whether an organism is single cell or whether an organism is multicellular. These are the two characteristics, alternate characteristics. If the organism is one cell, single cell that is unicellular, then we must have to go to point two, and if it has multiple cells, then we have to go to the point, go to the next key, is that is three. Now, what are the two and three? The next alternate set of characters which these two are couplets this one is lead and this one is also lead so if the cell is primary so cell is single that is unicellular organism is there then unicellular organism has differentiated into on the basis of two forms rather the nucleus present or nucleus absent that means whether the organism is single cell and eukaryotic and if the organism is single cell and eukaryotic then that would be protesta and if the organism is single cell and does not possess nucleus the nuclear material is not covered by a nuclear membrane then that organism will fall into the monad so on the basis of the second key, second statement couplet, we can conclude whether the organism is protista or polar. And if the organism is multicellular, then we go up to the point or the, when we go to the third couplet, third set of statements which tells us that whether the organism has autotrophic mode of nutrition or heterotrophic mode of nutrition. I am explaining the game okay? We are considering the first couplet that is the organism has single cell or multiple cells. These are the two statements. Those two statements are known as couplet. The one statement is known as lead. So from the first lead, if the organism has single cell, then we have to go to the statement or couplet two. And if the organism is multicellular, then we must have to look for the couplet third. If the unicellular is there, then unicellular is further divided on the basis of features whether the nucleus is present or not. If the nucleus is present, the organism is eukaryotic, and eukaryotic unicellular are known as protista, and prokaryotic unicellular are known as monera. So, from those three, we can conclude that whether that unicellular organism is either following protista or in monera. If the organism is multicellular, then what we have to choose? The third key. That is, organism is autotrophic or heterotrophic. Whether it can synthesize its own food or not. If it can synthesize its own food in multi cellular, it will fall into plantae. And if it is multicellular and heterotrophic, that it cannot synthesize in its own food, then we have to go to the couplet number four. Now, how the food is divided? There is a Differentiation in macrophagism, okay? whether the organism has cell wall over it or not. So, the fourth one is cell wall present or cell wall absent. If cell wall present, then that organism will fall into fungi, and if cell wall absent, then that will fall into the anomaly. And by these, by using these, we can conclude a particular species. So these are the keys which we use for identification. And by this topic, we will end our first chapter that is the living world.